What is up, ladies and gents? Welcome back to another episode of Getting to GC using basic game sense and basic mechanics. In the last episode, we hit the champion rank, and we're well on our way to getting to the GC. However, as we've reached every new rank, I've been trying to highlight and address a few more instances of mechanics that we can implement to help our ranking up process go a little bit smoother. In Diamond, we implemented the ground game and how to get good first touches so you can create more dribble and flick opportunities, or just creating a safe first touch and getting more favorable 50s. We haven't been highlighting too many 50-50 scenarios. Nearing the, end of this, nearing the end of the diamond grind, there was many more opportunities where I had to get good 50s, and that's only going to increase as we rank up. There's going to be very many more scenarios where I don't have much boost, and I actually have to get the best 50 possible to just stall the game, get boost, and then rotate back or something of that nature. So we're going to be looking at how to get better 50s, and most importantly, how to get a little bit better first touches in the air and using our air roll as a micro movement to get better touches. So I'm going to quickly discuss how to do that. And to simply put it, it's honestly just practicing air rolling around the field. The way that I first started learning it, it was just joining free play and honestly just spinning my car as much as I could while staying consistent, feathering our boost, start learning how to drive in inverse, you know, make sure we're landing on our wheels, go backwards, just getting comfortable in the air. Pretty much with every movement is like the key to success here. Eventually, I transitioned that into just hitting the pro aerials, the ones that were stationary. Uh, this one really helped me learn how to, you know, keep my car in the air in an inverse position, all the while getting like a decent touch. So after I was comfortable doing that, obviously I just, you know, kind of amped up the difficulty. And the main objective for me here wasn't necessarily to get the goal, but just to get like a good touch. Like right here, I get a pretty powerful touch and I am using a little bit of air roll. However, if you're finding yourself going out for aerials and you're kind of just dropping the ball to the floor because you're hitting your wheels kind of like this, try your best to improve this aspect of your game moving forward because this is where problems will start to become a lot larger for you as you're ranking up getting these bad touches will only create the other team's opportunities to increase because they're going to be more skillful now every bad touch that you make just puts your your teammate in a bad position where they have to 1v1 or 1v2 and if you can cut out those chances and just keep getting good touches you'll see yourself becoming a much better player and last but not least is just micro moving on the ground i'll put this code in the uh, the description below because this strength and accuracy pack was something that I noticed getting a lot of shots off the ground when I was ranking up was really difficult. This one not so much because you know it's pretty open but you know you can still like micro move your car try hitting the left and the right side um, but more importantly when it's coming from this side I actually do like a little bit of an air roll sometimes just so I can get that ball a little bit more powerful towards the net and sometimes you actually have to hit the ball over the net or just get that hard touch. So getting an air roll here can sometimes create an opportunity when otherwise, if you're not air rolling, you're not able to get the same touch. So this is a pack that I like practicing because it actually showed me that getting a little air roll is giving myself more powerful shots more frequently. And it allowed me to just become a more powerful striker. So really try to start implementing that into your gameplay as we're getting to these ranks. So without further ado, let's get into some champion games. All right, and here we are in our first champion game. Distorted. Okay, keep up with our basic kickoffs. See if our teammate wants that middle boost. Doesn't seem like he does, so we're actually just gonna opt in and grab it. I'll go first. So that player was really struggling getting that dribble started. And we'll just try and get a little pop towards the middle. See if the backboard clears are connecting. So far, so good. He gets a first touch on that. Then we can challenge the shot. Pretty good chance there for us. Get some boost control here. Ooh, that's actually a pretty, pretty good turn. I don't know if he got that boost, so it's got to be careful here. Try to slow play this ball. Bring it up the wall. There's a good good touch to our teammate if he gets that open net shot. Oh, wow, okay. Whew. We'll, uh, we'll uh, say great pass here. So that 50-50 off the wall was obviously just kind of a 
you know, if we win that 50, that goes middle, just based on our positioning of the car. And our teammate kind of misses the open net, but we're there to solidify it. Uh, I might just go right in. Kind of tough, so a double jump aerial for that one. Might be able to drop it. Perfect. Um, really good 50 from our teammate off the back or off the sidewall here. Um, I thought I was going to go crossbar down, and that's kind of why we just practice all of our mechanics so we can adjust on the fly. Because that is one of those aerials where just double jumping and getting a touch on target is probably going to be more important than, you know, trying to get a powerful shot there. Because we just need to get it on target. Another 50 towards the middle. We'll stay upfield because we definitely don't need to go back for boost here. Teammate does a fantastic shot off of the sidewall. And that is something that I do think in champion players are going to be a little bit more capable of. Is just getting those two touches off the sidewall. Very nice aerial from this man too. So they get a pretty much a quick one-two. He reads it off the ceiling, which was actually really, really well done. Cheat up on this. There we go. Now we can slow play this, get a chip shot. Just got it around him, and that might be good enough. Perfect. No one saw that. We definitely didn't see that. <laughs> And again, sometimes you really have to f try to understand that some you don't need to necessarily shoot like a super nice shot on target. You just have to beat the last defenseman. And in that scenario, that's exactly all we had to do. We knew the guy on kickoff was out of the play. So we just kind of have to pop that past the last defender. I uh, kind of cut my teammate here, so hopefully he understands to wait for the pass. Good job. Um, he's floating, so I'm gonna actually let him grab middle boost, and that way we're, you know, keeping our rotations intact there. If I tried stealing that middle boost, I kind of would have just put him in a really weird spot. Uh, we'll see how he handles that. Wasn't able to do much. Teammate should have a pretty clean 1v1 touch here. Um, I don't know what the other team's doing, but we'll just go in on that touch and get a rebound, maybe? Eh, you know, it happens, it happens. We mi you miss some open nets every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now it's going left. We don't need to play really aggressive here. We can just kind of wait for the ball to come to us. Try to get the controlled touch so our teammate can get a backboard read. Perfect. And we'll let him try to get one more. Maybe he puts it middle for us. Perfect, perfect. A really good pass from our teammate here. Um, this is the this is the benefit of playing patient. We could have went off that touch right away. But we trusted our teammate to making the second touch. He missed it, but he was actually able to land on the wall and then throw it middle for us. And we were just practicing those power shots pretty much off the air. We'll sit back post here. Looks like Side Sloth is having a really tough time. He, he, this is a player that would definitely, um, based on what we're watching, he would really benefit from practicing those first touches. Did I just miss another one? <laughs> Here, I'm passing it to my teammate, actually. There. Oh, okay, okay. He's passing it back. All right. Little monkey in the middle. Here, back to you. Oh, wait. I lied. Good luck, teammate. So we're just going to wait for the flick in case it gets beat. Ah, we almost got it. That was kind of our fault for missing six, over six open nets right there. I'm also queuing these games at 6 a.m. I woke up pretty early. I know if you guys have ever watched the stream, this is uh, irregular hours for me. I promise you, I'm actually just waking up. I'm not just awake. Normally, I am falling asleep at 6 a.m. like these guys, it seems. So we can wait for this potential whiff. Let's double jump to beat him to the ball. And then we just lurk because he's probably going to hit it to us. Drop it to the middle for our teammate. And if he misses that, we'll go. Just kind of keep getting good good touches, keeping in their end and until someone makes a mistake. Uh, this is actually tough for us, but we'll try and get a good 50 here. We actually just beat him. I'm surprised we weren't 50 in that. And we can let this one drop and just get a power shot. Teammate kind of makes a sketchy touch. We get really lucky with that pre-jump, but I don't know if it's enough. So this is actually a touch from our teammate where... 
We tried slowing the ball down and letting it roll to us so we could get a big booming clear. Uh, he actually jumps in front of it and makes it super awkward for us, so that was kind of a misplay from him. These guys are writing us an essay. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the storyline. Good save from that guy. Another double jump just to make sure we beat that guy. Wave dashing towards him to create an awkward 50. And we'll try to steal this and run away. Still okay. Looks like an open net for us. Uh, we have to respect that touch, so we're just playing safe here. Get it off the back wall for our teammate. Nice save again. And now we have to play safe because our teammate's on a slow rotation. And we should be good enough now. This should be definitely enough time in case we miss this backboard. He's there. Perfect. Um, ends up getting a bad touch backwards. This guy's going to be awkward, so we're just going to lurk middle. Not over-aggressing here. And then just, you know, stalling the clock a little bit more. Making some more touches to make that awkward for him. Our teammate's definitely behind us. So we don't even really have to risk going for that aerial, right? And it should be game. Or is it? GG. So pretty good first game. Only one really uh, big whoopsie from us besides the seven open nets that we missed. But uh, rotation-wise, there's only one whoopsie. Uh, and that's our first champion game. So GG, so let's keep going. All right, here we are entering another champion game. Oh, I actually do believe I recognize these players. The 6 a.m. Qs. We get Aqua this time. Get a little bit of a cheat. That's a good kickoff for us, so we can just try and beat that guy. A little bit too slow. I uh, also decided to go for that touch, which means my teammate couldn't. And it put him in an awkward spot, so a little bit of an awkward play from me. I pretty much needed to beat my defender. Oh, they double commit. We'll just put this wall fast. Eh, not good enough. My bad. Teammate has to make an inverse aerial. That's my bad. I kind of put that out, and it didn't get high enough off the wall. So uh, my teammate had to make the inverse aerial. And as we've mentioned before, those are the tough ones. We'll leave middle boost in case my teammate doesn't get their corner. And this is where the backboard clears come into play. I uh, end up missing, but Aqua... Wow! Close, close, close. Nice try, though. Oh, wait, does he still make it? Oh, and I just made a huge mistake, too. But maybe I can make it back. This guy's going to probably just hit it over my head. Yeah, that's my fault. I thought that was spiking off the ceiling much harder than it was. Um, and, uh, yeah. We got really over-aggressive. Got caught over-committing. Away she goes. Now we can get one of our own, maybe. Do a little double jump aerial. Put it on target. They figured out their rotations on that save. I thought they might team bump each other there, but. So if Hako gets beat, we can go. We can just slow this play down because the last player is really far back. Wasn't able to dribble it quick enough, but the idea was there for sure. Try to get this kill here. Kind of made a mistake. All good. Going down 3-0 early. We've done this before. Bring it back real quick. So they're both committing on this kickoff now. So if we get this boost grab and our teammates going, then we can get the rebound quickly. And that's exactly how that works. Double committing on kickoffs. It's as easy as that. I'm telling you. Communicate on kickoffs. It might save you a goal. Because they didn't have anybody back with boost to really deal with that rebound. And as long as we put that on, on target, we'll probably be fine. Um, teammates hopping around a lot. Okay, I can just power shot this. See if he makes an awkward touch. Another inverse aerial. And try and just let this guy hit it one time. I think my teammate's behind me now, so this is should be okay. Players are getting some two touches on the air dribbles now. Looks like that guy's gonna go, but we can challenge him quickly. And now our teammate should have a free touch, hopefully. He beats one. That goes middle. If he gets it middle, we can maybe try for it. It's too dangerous to challenge. And honestly, this is two. Our teammate's still kind of slow on his rotation, so we're just slowly, slowing the play down here. And now he's in position to help me out here. Good job. A little bit scary, but at least he was in position. Aqua chooses to slow this play down. I approve of that. So if this guy makes a bad touch, which he doesn't. We have to respect that boom, though. 
And now we can challenge that. Teammate gets a controlled touch to the corner. And here's another passing opportunity. Actually, just a fantastic play from our teammate off the wall here. We do steal that goal, though. <laughs> really, really well done off the wall there. There's a 50-50. He leaves that middle boost. He's going for a little bit of an air dribble of himself. Pretty good. Pretty good close chance there. We can go relatively fast here because I do believe that middle boost is up. I'm going to bail out of this aerial because our teammate went. I, was, I didn't really have any real reason to go for that, so I just immediately canceled my choice. Barely, barely defend the flick. Ock was going on a murder spree. Did a little chop shot. We weren't able to steal his boost, but we're still in a pretty good position. Aqua tries to rotate. I had to avoid him team bumping me. Um, so that's why I was a little bit awkward on challenging that quickly. Almost lands on it. There's a chip shot into a power shot. Almost squeak it in. So our teammate actually has been playing really well on offense, putting it middle for us. I can't get this too quick. Try to get back middle. All right, so we have a lot of pressure here. And this is like that shot we were just showing at the beginning of the video. Get a kill, open up the net. Just try to keep that high, grab back boost here. And there's a wall play of their own. I'm gonna go steal this boost now. I don't wanna go full NASCAR. I don't wanna go all the way down the field there, just in case. Our teammate makes a fantastic pass again. And going for this one's not too dangerous as long as I get it on target. Because our teammate will have a pretty clean rotation, grabbing that back boost here and then getting a fast rotation if I do end up missing. Thankfully, we got it barred down. So this teammate actually favors infield passing quite a bit, which is nice to see. We can fake that and steal boost. And just control the play here and run away now. Our teammate... Sh okay, my bad. thought our teammate would be closer, but... This guy doesn't have boost in the net now, so if he makes a good touch... Oh, this is actually a good chance. Yeah, too scary. If that got over young Boozle's head, we would absolutely have went, but it was too dangerous. Ooh, we have to dodge a bump of our own. Almost got caught there. Oh, a little whoopsie on the first touch. Just put that high and then run away so our teammate can have a chance at it. And now we're in position for the rebound. And that is how I favor my passing at lower ranks. As I was talking previously, um, if I had drove along the back wall and tried to get that drop down pass, it just makes the pass so much more risky because I'm not in a defensive rotation. If I just pop that ball, I put the defenders in an awkward spot and I also give the go ahead to my teammate to challenge it quicker. And we just forced a bad touch from the defense there which gave us an open net and we just kind of threw it on it. We just threw it on net. I didn't even get a good shot necessarily, but it just rolled in because they both had to go for the double commit. Um, he kind of throws it middle there, just kind of zoom at him. And that should be game. There's a, the FF. Kind of squeak it through there. Pretty good game. Uh, we went down 3-0 again, kept our composure, didn't tilt out, bring the game back. And uh, GG. And there's Division 2. Let's keep going. Alright, so I have made a mistake this episode. I forgot to record the last two games. Maybe three games. I actually don't know, but right now we're actually in Champion 1 Division 3. The games that we've played so far, I've actually seen the same inconsistencies on the back wall. The players on the side wall, though, I, I feel like it's a really weird disconnect right now in Champion. The players on the side wall have become really, really strong, but their back wall gameplay is not quite there yet. And it, I, I feel like I'm not too sure w why there's a disconnect, but our player almost just did a, dis you know, a really good side play. All the way into a flip reset actually so that was actually cool to watch let's see if he gets a pass downfield here he actually does get it so now we'll try to get back middle to him uh, looks like he was hustling for boost or something almost a team play though so we got to charge yeah i was nervous of the the boom 
That's actually a really bad touch for me. Their teammate bails us out really well. We'll just try to steal boost there. Actually making them really awkward here. We'll just go a chip shot into another touch. Wasn't quite able to get the bump on him there. And we're on a slow rotation. Teammates doing a really good job though. We gotta cut that out. And now we can get an open net shot. Which of course, you know, uh, those are the hardest shots to make. Teammate does a good job of keeping pressure. Our objective here is just to keep the, the pressure in their zone. Just try to get a touch as quickly as possible. There's one whiff and our team, or the opponent's backwards there. So we're just gonna try and put that on target. Using our air roll there, just to make our 50 a little bit stronger towards the wall. Uh, teammate might be dropping it down for us. I can't go for this, so we'll just wait for his touch. And he pretty much just like gave us a pass. And uh, that's why we just be patient there. That guy went super panicky on the back wall. He went up really, really early. Um, if you're in a position like that where you're having to make like a really scary inverse aerial and you can't get onto the back wall in time, sometimes it's almost better just to play off an audio cue of your opponent, which in that case was me. Like as soon as I jump for jump up for the ball, that's probably when I would try to go for the inverse aerial, but there's no real reason to go super early there if there's no potential shot. And our teammate makes actually pretty good touch i just kind of sat there waiting for uh the potential rebound but as soon as i saw him hitting it light i was just in position to get it a little bit more power on it i actually didn't place it that well but it was hard enough for him that he couldn't score it and they, here we can just drop this ball down just kind of kill it there i knew our teammate was over on that boost so I was kind of to kind of drop it down for him, but that's okay. This will be scary because it's going off the ceiling. Let's try to get a pop quickly. And if he misses on the sidewall, then we have a good chance. Teammate might have a boom. So we'll just sit middle. Wait for the whiffs. And we'll control this one over to the wall and just pop it up again. And then run away. That way our teammate can go quickly. That guy gives us another open net. So we just... You know, practicing that strength and accuracy pack, I think both of our goals came from pretty much a very similar spot. Just making sure we're getting that up and over. That player is getting a little bit panicky with his touches. Uh, keeps throwing it away. We're just kind of positioning ourselves, waiting for the bad touch. And capitalizing on a uh, couple open nets that he was giving us. So yeah, we're actually still in Division 3. Um, pretty quick game here. Uh, entering Champion 2 pretty close so yeah we'll hop into another game that was a quick one okie dokie see if we get a full game this time that was a pretty quick forfeit actually might end up getting the same players in this lobby i think fireball was the player that was being a little panicky so okay we get him on our team this time so now we get to see we got to see how it was playing against him and how panicky he was but now we get to see how we get to play with him and how to actually like Highlight his strengths, I guess, as a player. Because you can't just get to champion two by fumbling your way through. You gotta you got have some some ability. So we're just gonna space ourselves from him. Um, just put that back to the side. That's a good pop. So we'll just keep the pressure here. Picking up the pads, not opting to go for that big boost because we're not gonna get there first. And they actually never challenged me. We, we, we just didn't opt to go for that big boost. I wasn't going to win the challenge. Um, that guy goes for the hard boost over there. And we just sort of jump at the ball. <laughs> I can't believe that squeaked in. Just making sure we're doing good kickoffs still. Teammate, I wasn't able to see who has boost over here. So we have to play safer. Uh, also sort of dangerous. So we're just going to safe rotate here. As I hit my back wheel into the post, but as you can see, the safe rotate ended up being fine because there was no shot. And there's another panic touch. Teammates open. Close. Nice try. That's, that's a dunk we can go. Perfect. So we're just going to double jump for that quick. Really good touch from that guy, though. Let him have that boost so we can get this boost. And... Oh, I thought it was going in. I'm sorry. <laughs> So, another panic touch from him. He could have just slowed that down and stayed in front of it for a 50-50. But this is working out pretty well. And that's another open net for us. So, our teammate actually gets away with... Uh, it was just like a really awkward challenge in the corner, but it gets a massive dunk on that guy, and we just wait for the whiff again. He ends up making a bad touch. Pops it out middle. Open net. 
We'll let him go for this again if he wants another touch. Which he doesn't. That's fine. That's like one of those opportunities where not too much was lost. Because we still have possession here. And we can just score off that backboard. But if we had went really quickly into that corner and he chooses to go as well, then we're double committing and we just throw our entire offense away. So we didn't really lose it on too much by letting him grab that boost and then rotating behind us because we were still able to get a touch on the back wall. And again, another whiff. And we sort of just capitalize off of another open net, essentially. Um, it looks like he's trying to take this right side. So we'll just let him keep challenging. Leave that middle boost in case he needs it for rotation. He's going for weird bumps and we're going to slow this down. Put that to our corner and then go safe rotation. Now our teammate has boost and can maybe hit that across. See? So it's just kind of like spacing ourselves, rotating well with this teammate. Um, kind of controlling the ball so he doesn't panic touch it away because that's what he was struggling with last game. We're just kind of getting those controlled touches on defense. And then our teammate's able to rotate in and help us out. So we can boom that over them. We don't have any boost, but we're going to stay supersonic and just rotate eventually. In case they miss there. And we're just going to get another pop back middle. Or not middle, but just down the field. This game, we just want to be the player on defense so we can get those controlled touches. Like right there, if he trapped the ball, he could have brought it up the wall and had a nice controlled defensive play. But he panics and jumps into it and it almost pops out middle. Um, so those first touches are really coming into hand here. I feel like we have a big advantage on a lot of the opponents right now because they're just getting really big panic touches. And we'll just rotate away, right? Our teammate can cut this first. That's super hard, so we just try to read that that blind aerial. Gets another one. We'll try and get that quick. That's a big boom. There's no chance in hell we're catching that first, so we'll let our teammate ball chase. And that's too dangerous to go for. He'll just let him boom the ball to us. And we don't need a challenge yet. Our teammate spawned now, so he should be able to help here now. Perfect. We can bump this guy. Get the pass middle. Close, close, close. So, aggressing that very dangerous to go too early there because if we go too early he flicks it over us our teammates still respawning and then there's no backup so we pretty much just wait for the offense to make the flick and then our teammate was able to spawn in and help us but if we went over aggressive there then we could have been in some big danger there we go Let's see if he gets that middle for us there he does great pass Oh, he almost almost saved it. So this is an aggressive play that we can go for because our, our opponent is slow and to the right side of us. And his car is actually like facing backwards a bit. So he's going to have to make a tight turn. And as long as we're quick and put that on target, we're probably going to score it. Worst case scenario, he gets in front of it and it pinches to the left wall. Um, and there we are getting close to champion two. I'm sorry that I missed a couple games there uh, in the division two uh, in the Division 2 games there, but yeah, very close to Champion 2. We'll probably get that next episode. But as we saw from the last game there, Fireball, panic touches on when he was against us. We just made sure we were the more defensive and controlled player. That way, we pretty much dis we didn't allow Fireball to have panic touches because we were always the ones that were making them. So that's kind of how you want to you want to be that teammate. That can that can bring in the positives to your to your teammates' weaknesses. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully, you think you've learned a thing or two in this episode. We'll get to champion two next episode. And as always, take care. Cheers.